Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are looking at collection analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. Uh, we are in the third module probability distributions using R and in this module we have discussed several uh, discrete probability distributions and uh, we have taken one practical example or case study for the importance of uh, these distributions where they occur and which is the atom probe technique. And we are also using this as an example of uh, error analysis uh, because our aim is first to understand the process that takes place in atom probe and then find out the right statistics and knowing the information on the statistics in terms of variances, what can we say about the composition uh, determination uh, of the sample and its error based on the measurements that we make in the um, atom probe experiment. So, that is the question that we are trying to answer. And so, in this uh, session we are going to do the error analysis. So, in the previous two sessions we showed that the selection process and detection process uh, have negative binomial and hypergeometric distributions. And knowing that those distributions then it is easy to say what is the expected value and what is the variance. So, that is what we had done. And in this we are going to put together all the analysis and we are going to talk about the error analysis which is a follow up on something that we had done earlier in the descriptive statistics session. So, we did talk about error, error propagation and how to do analysis and so on and so forth. So, we, we will continue in this session now to look at uh, uh, error uh, propagation in the atom probe experiment. Just to remind we have a specimen and it has a proportion P of A atoms and we have probed a volume and we have pulled out M atoms from a volume V out of which J of them are A atoms and so the proportion is uh, P of A atoms and these M are expected to fall on the detector out of which N are detected and in the detected atoms I of them are A atoms and the proportion happens to be P naught. And so there is a selection process and there is a detection process and in these two processes you get errors and uh, you get the total error or total uncertainty in the quantity that you are trying to determine by adding up these uh, errors. How do you add is the crucial question and that is what we are going to discuss. So, P0 uh, if we say that is the composition in the specimen P right. So, suppose we say that let us use this P naught to measure the composition of the specimen which is P. Now, given the estimated value of P naught what is the error in P right. So, because remember this P naught is connected to this P through two steps. So, there is a uh, error at every stage. So, you have to take that into account. So, so concentration from atom probe is only an estimation. Uh, it is an estimate because from detected atoms um, we are trying to say something about the composition of the specimen. But uh, this uh, detection is based on two sequential samplings, it is not single sampling. We are not just pulling out atoms and finding out what is a fraction. We pull out some atoms out of which only a fraction uh, is detected. So, there is a selection process and there is a detection process. Like we discussed earlier selection is choosing m random atoms from the sample area and the sample area is assumed to consist of infinite number of atoms. In other words the m atoms that we pull out is very small compared to the total number of atoms in the sample area. And the assumption is that probed volume is representative of the sample. Again if this is not so we will get wrong results if you do the analysis. But we are assuming that the probed volume is representative of the sample. So, whatever results we can get we can say is actually the composition of the sample or is reflect, reflects the composition or it estimates the composition of the sample. The probability of getting A is the same in all trials. So, it is a Bernoulli trial. So, we are pulling out random atoms um, from the given infinite uh, atoms that are there and because uh, the alloy is a random solid solution 
the probability of picking an A atom will depend on its composition, it is directly proportional to its composition and so it is a Bernoulli trial, so it is a binomial. So, this we have already seen that it, it happens to be a negative binomial, but it is a binomial. Now, the detection is done with an efficiency Q, but the detection process is sampling without replacement from a finite population M. And so, out of M each trial leads to different probability for getting A because we are having a finite population. Because of which this distribution again it is based on a Bernoulli, it is detected or not detected and so on. Uh, except that it is a um, re sampling without replacement from a finite population, so it happens to be hypergeometric. So, we have binomial, we have hypergeometric and we know the variance in this case, we, we derived it in one of the earlier sessions, we know what is the variance in this, we have derived in the previous session. So, classical error, error analysis is to calculate uncertainty in each case, that is the variance in each case and add them up. This was what was done and the variance was reported to be P naught into 1 minus P naught by N. But there is a problem because like we discussed in the error analysis uh, uh, sessions, you cannot add the errors unless you assume that the processes are independent. And we can clearly see that in this case the processes are not independent because you have to select atoms only from the selected atoms you are going to make the detection. So, the selection is the, the detection is conditional on selection, right. So, you cannot assume that these two are independent and so it is wrong to do this uh, kind of classical error analysis where uncertainties are just added. From Denov's paper you understand that this what was were, uh, this was what was done before they wrote their paper and tried to correct this, okay. They said that look this is not independent process, so it is wrong to add them. So, let us do the proper analysis and what is the proper analysis? Because the errors are not, um, uh, the, the processes are not independent, the addition of errors is not correct, uh, ours is a sequential process. So, we should look at what happens to error. See selection of probed volume is a sequence of Bernoulli trial, so it is a binomial distribution and it goes as uh, um, binomial with uh, um, some probability, right. So, the variance uh, for this process is P into 1 minus P by M, okay. Now, detection process is hypergeometric, so you can show that the variance for detection process is P into 1 minus P into 1 minus Q by N. So, we know the two variances, what we should um, if the selection of probed volume and the detection process are independent, variance in the final result is sum of two variances and so we can just add them up and if you add them up approximately you can show it to be P0 into 1 minus P0 by N. And but because this is not correct, what should we do, okay. So, because they are sequential and not independent, we have to establish a distribution law D for i a atoms to be detected. So, we have n atoms which are detected out of which i of them are of type a. We have to find out what is the distribution law d for i a atoms to be detected and calculate the variance based on that. If this random variable m results in the realization m, then the i is basically a hypergeometric function. But we know that m is a variable, so it can change. So, we want to sum this probability distribution over m and so we will get something which is only a function of j and n if you do the summing. This is the definition of marginal distribution we discussed when we started these sessions on probability distribution. So, if you have a joint probability distribution, you can sum over one of the variables and what you get is a marginal uh, distribution. So, that is the idea that is being used here. So, you sum and you get D and D you get in terms of J and N and you can show that this goes as binomial. 
because it goes as binomial and it goes as binomial with uh, uh, n and p as the parameters because it goes as binomial with n and p as parameters you can show that the variance is p naught into 1 minus p naught by n. This is what I said about the surprising uh, result at the end after doing all the analysis. So, here is a process where we assume that they are independent and we just added and approximately we got uh, this result. And here is a process where we have done the actual analysis, the correct analysis assuming that they are sequential and they are not independent. So, do the uh, marginal distribution and get the variance for the marginal distribution, uh, we get the same result. So, even though the classical error analysis was wrong, the result was not wrong, which means that uh, uh, Danois paper shows the right analysis, but it does not rule out the conclusions that were drawn from the previous studies. So, that is the um, surprising thing that okay, you do all this detailed analysis and you find that accidentally you happen to have the same variance, uh, which also tells you that sometimes you might measure some variance and uh, that might be a right variance, but you might be having a wrong understanding of things. So, which is uh, a little bit problematic. So, that is the first conclusion, you can get right results for wrong reasons. So, you have to be careful, you have to keep analyzing uh, your logic, your way of thinking and your analysis. Um, but and it is important to follow statistical arguments logically. If you do not do, if you just uh, do a recipe kind of thing without understanding exactly what is what, uh, you might do wrong analysis. Uh, and the, the, this is also a nice case study to understand how we have to understand the physical processes and translate them into statistical or mathematical arguments. So, uh, which is a infinite um, sample, which is a finite sample, which is uh, sampling without replacement and so, so on and so forth. So, so there are at every stage you have to understand the actual process that happens in the experiment. Then we have to find out what is the right statistics to describe that process. And it so happens that the convolution of a normal uh, which is a selection process and hypergeometric which is a detection process is a binomial. Why is the uh, selection process uh, normal? Uh, because uh, we are going to just pull out uh, some m atoms from the sample, we are going to pull them out randomly. So, any uh, deviation you would find is only because of noise um, or, or thermal fluctuations. And we are going to learn about this distribution called the normal distribution, which is a continuous distribution. It is very, very important. One of the reasons why it is very important is also the fact that uh, random errors typically lead to uh, normal distribution. So, so that is why uh, the selection process was normal uh, and uh, the detection was a hypergeometric. And so, the convolution of these two normal plus hypergeometric happens to be binomial and that is why we got the binomial as the solution. So, I once again strongly recommend uh, reading the papers by Dano et al and uh, it is very nicely written and, and very logically explained. It will give you a good idea about this uh, process of um, uh, atom probe. It will also give you a flavor for how these uh, statistical distributions are important in material science and engineering. And finally, it will also tell you how to mix the different components that we have. We did error analysis and we are doing probability distribution, but uh, real life problems do not come labeled as probability distribution problem or error analysis problem. It comes as a mixture and in fact, it is in this case coming as a mixture of some normal distribution and hypergeometric distribution. So, it is uh, uh, two different distributions, one continuous and one discrete and the actual process that you do happens to be a combination of these two out of which then you have to uh, do the error analysis and come up with the right uh, value for error and so on. So, that is why um, it is it's a nice case study wherein you have to bring to bear all the information you have and all the concepts you have learnt and all the methods you have learnt and use it to solve a problem of practical interest. So, these um, are some of the important distributions, discrete distributions we have looked at and also important type of problems that you will encounter in terms of finding out errors and so on. 
So, we will continue to work with more distributions and so far we have done Bernoulli trials and binomial, negative binomial and hypergeometric. So, then we will move on to one more discrete probability distribution that we have uh, which is the Poisson distribution. So, that is what we will do in the next session. So, I will end this session here and I again strongly recommend that you read the paper of Dano to have a better appreciation. In the second paper there is also the uh, 3D analysis that is described and again there is a interesting uh, conclusion there that the detector efficiency also is going to contribute to the error. So, I, I recommend that you take a look at the paper. Thank you.